So to me, science is completely lost. I don't know how it's going to come back from this because I think the public is already extremely skeptical as they should be. And so for me now, I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going rogue and just doing my own thing. Well, a lot of journalists have found themselves in that same position too, right? A lot of people yeah. have just gone to Substack, people that yep. were working for the New York Times and all these, you know, before very reputable institutions. And now they find themselves ideologically homeless. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, so I, I'm a journalist now too, and I found the same thing that, you know, there were some left leaning media platforms that I could write for very easily before. Uh, when I last time I was on your show, I just want to clarify because I know a number of people are quite upset with me when I said I was a liberal and I'm also pro science. I'm definitely not saying that because someone is politically liberal or left leaning that they are pro science because definitely I think over the last three, four years we see what pro quote pro science means so i think you can deny science regardless of where you are on the political spectrum and i definitely my work for the most part calls out i'd say left-leaning science now because i think liberals are getting away with it the most right now because they have such a chokehold on the culture and our institutions more broadly well the really disturbing thing is that they've abandoned the idea of what science is supposed to be it's supposed to be objectively assessing data mm -hmm. and looking at numbers and looking at measurements and looking at the, the reality of the situation and not putting everything through an ideological lens and the fact that they're doing that first and that they have to list all their biases and like their privileges <laughs> and all this different shit and their gender and all that craziness is just like they're they're essentially saying that that's more important than the objective truth that's more important than the facts and the measurements and the data also that they have such difficulty in calling out anti-semitism because i was watching your podcast from yesterday i think it was and yeah. just I was just, I'm just appalled. I'm appalled at, at the fact that you're in an environment where like there are students who are literally afraid they're locking themselves in the library to try and be safe. Uh, this is not acceptable to me. It, and, and the fact that you have speech codes that are designed to protect other groups, presumably, but yet groups that are doing well in society like Jewish and Asian people, we're considered white now. So it's OK to discriminate against us, as you see with affirmative action and as you see with what's happening right now in terms of the, the Congress hearing. So. I just don't know how academia is going to come back. I've, at this point, I really have just said, okay, well, I think we're going to have to wait another 15, 20 years and hopefully alternatives will be built up and hopefully the public will see the value in science and education again one day. Yeah, it's weird, right? The, 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 Cong the Congress hearings, they're so strange. It's so strange seeing these presidents of major universities that aren't just unwilling to call out anti-Semitism. They don't seem to have a problem with what these people are saying. And they, they seem to be trying to find some way to either apologize for it or just dismiss it. It's like to say that it has to be actionable when you're literally calling for death to the Jews. Depends on the context. It's insane. <laughs> what so kind of context? Ridiculous. Is that okay? What, I mean, what, when? I mean, when, when people in, you know, when I was in high school and we would look back on the Holocaust and we look back on World War II and you study it in school, it was always confusing. Like, how did this happen? How did mm -hmm. anyone just decide that one group of people is okay to exterminate? And how are these like modern anatomically similar human beings to the people that are living right now, like when, you know, in the eighties when I was in high school and when we're thinking about this. This is only 40 years, which is so crazy. So we're literally talking about like as if something happened in the 90s today, mm -hmm. which is so crazy. It's so hard to uh, imagine that like something from like 1989, like uh, or uh, let's say when I was in high school, I graduated in 85. Imagine there was a Holocaust then and we were trying to understand it in 2023. It's so recent. Mm -hmm. Like how? How did they do it? And then you see these professors or these teachers, these, these presidents of these universities, you go, oh, this hasn't gone away at all. This is like, we're still insane. We're still insane. And not just insane with like some meth smoking dictator who's in Germany. No, a fucking president of Harvard in 2023. Like, what is happening? How is this possible? It, it, I think it highlights for many people the 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 giant difference between the real world and what kind of ideological subversion is going on in universities because i think for 
the most part, most people who, you know, are my age or younger, who've graduated, gone on to work and they're living their lives and having families and they're looking back going, what is how, how, mm -hmm. but these people there, it is a cult. It is a cult. It's just a massive one. So these people don't think it's a cult. They think they're on the right side of history. Yeah. They think they're on the right road to change. And the whole world is rejecting that. But the fact that Harvard hasn't done anything about that lady, not only that, but they found the plagiarism w that she uh, allegedly did. And they're still like, they're forgiving her for that too. Well, I think when you buy into that way of thinking, there's no turning back. You just, their way of, my generalization of of this type of activism is you just keep doubling down because they're so indoctrinated in that way of thinking and I think it also probably makes them feel like they are I want to give people the benefit of the doubt and think that they're probably thinking they're doing something good because they see success in society as somehow being unethical that you must have done something wrong or bad to get there you must have done something to hurt other people to get there so because Jewish and Asian people are doing well predominantly or in general in society they think well okay you must have oppressed these other groups who may not be doing as well. So it's justified. And so they have to call us white and they have to basically go to any extent. But I, I think they, they can't back down at this point because their whole worldview is going to crumble in. So why would they? They're, they're winning too. So why would they? I mean, I guess they're winning. But there's, you know, there's people pulling their donations from these universities mm. now, especially Jewish families. But not just Jewish families. A lot of people are just like, what the hell is going on over there? For you as an academic, w when you look at this, do you try to like look towards the future and imagine where this goes? Oh, yeah. And I want to be clear, like I would say this same thing if they were targeting a different group. It doesn't matter to me what someone's racial or ethnic background is. It's very much that you need to be consistent with your values. And if you have speech codes in place to protect students or to protect particular groups you have to hold that consistent across all groups you can't just say particular groups we are not going to say certain things quote speech is violence there's such a thing as quote intergenerational trauma for some groups but other groups that doesn't matter it's as though the holocaust didn't leave trauma on anybody you know what i mean right. so that inconsistency bothers me and I, I just don't think anyone students especially trying to get an education should ever be physically afraid or uncomfortable on campus.